How's it going guys? Welcome back. Got some more games on the Steam Deck for you today. Gonna to be looking at some uh, some pretty popular titles. I've got some Star Wars for you to look at, the new Star Wars Lego game. Great, been playing that a lot this week. I was a bit hesitant of getting it at first because I don't know how well it'd run, but because the Steam Deck community is so buzzing over on Reddit, we uh, I found out pretty much as soon as it came out, some guy had already pre-ordered it, tested it out. Basically, we just had to run it on an experimental mode. And it worked perfectly, so I mean, I'm just loving uh, the community, how everyone is just communicating with each other through Reddit. Um, even the comments on my YouTube videos, we've been having a discussion about a lot of different things uh, from FSR. Just to different different games to try out, it's been great, but uh, for starters, let's uh, have a look at GTA 5. Game's been out a long time now, since like 2013, but still, feels great playing GTA 5 on a handheld console. As you can see, we're running a 60 in the top left. Uh, it dips slightly when driving, just because of the loading in of different textures, cars, popping, whatever. Uh, I'm running at 60 because it just feels so smooth, uh, ultra smooth. You could run this at 30. I mean, I'm, my battery life isn't full. I'm on about 40% at the minute, so it's not going to give you a massively good example. But yeah, if, if, you, go, if you go by this, you're going to look at like, if you run like 98%, you're going to be looking at like an hour and 40 on on 100% to 98% battery on 60 FPS. But you'd be surprised at how much more battery life you can get out of it if you drop that frame rate to 30. So I just drive around for a minute and let it just catch up with itself. Uh, whilst it catches up with itself, I have to say, some of the uh, back buttons on this Steam Deck are, are so good. Like I've just I've mapped the bottom right uh, back button to the drift, and yeah, it's perfect for drifting. Also, mapped the top left button to the the abilities the characters have. So Franklin has a, an ability when he's driving, he can slow down time. So normally you'd press the two buttons in the two analog sticks in and it would activate the ability but it's a bit of a hassle when you're actually controlling a car to do that so i mapped it to the back but the back trigger one of the back bumper buttons anyway and as soon as i press that it just activates the special ability which is awesome uh, to do that you just go into steam literally go to the right controller settings and then you can choose which one it is so i did l4 and then you can also add another command so it can push two buttons at once and yeah easy as that i just love how uh how in depth the the control scheme uh, mapping is and stuff in steam it's, it's so good works in com like works in old games that don't support any button mapping whatsoever like you can just pretty much do it all via valve software right so if i show you the battery now an hour and 27 so it's top, it's hopped from around 45 to an hour and 27 36 percent that's not bad especially for, for playing gta 5 you know if you can get used to playing it at 30 fps or if you'd rather play it next to a charger have it plugged in just play it at 60 i mean it's still handheld right This isn't going to dip below 30 because we're close to, we're pretty much locked 60 anyway. I'll just show you the settings I've got running at the minute. These are pretty much my go-to settings. Uh, I, I think I use these settings for GTA 5 on the Ionia as well. Kind of use that as like a reference guide, but I mean, they're pretty standard settings. Normal, normal, normal. Pretty simple stuff. Had a few bugs with the settings in GTA though, like you change the settings in the game, but they wouldn't save for some reason until you restarted the game. And then the randomly changed, but yeah. Apart from that, it's been pretty smooth. GTA is always a great story game to run through again, so I can definitely see myself playing this again. But I'm a, a little bit backlogged, I've been trying to finish Dead Space at the minute. And to be fair... Not as enjoyable as I remember it being back in the day. It's very repetitive. I mean, it's like kind of like go here, disable the shields, attach a antenna to an asteroid, go here, shoot some more creatures, more jump scares. I definitely prefer the second one. Um, although that is more of the same, kind of has more of like a, a better vibe to it. I don't know. 
also love the ability in the second one where you can like use your kinetic blast to like pick up people's limbs and blow for people's heads off of them it's pretty sick can't really do that in the first one as well but as you can see gta 5 works really well um, if you want me to trial a mission or anything let me know but for spoilers purposes i know the game's been out for like nearly 10 years now but for spoiler purposes i kind of don't want to show off any missions but as you can see everything works perfectly actually i'll just swap to michael and just show you how quick that does it um this would be a good test to be fair because i'm running on the uh the micro sd card you can see how quickly it swaps character pretty damn fast right so yeah this is running on the micro sd card just to give you an example of the, the loading times but there you go gta 5 on the steam deck and we're back a little bioshock infinite for you one of my favorite games on this on the iron here just because of how sick it feels to play portably and because to be fair i like i played this on the switch and i mean it looked really cool and it looked it was amazing to have bioshock on the switch for the first time but playing it in 60 fps at like pretty much high settings is uh yeah it's a completely different experience Show you my settings I'm running at quickly. So, presets high. I've got the lock frame rate on, basically ver vertical sync. Uh, yeah, basically it. Running at 60. Uh, battery life isn't going to be amazing. I mean, it's 33%, we get getting about an hour. So, not terrible. game's great if you haven't played Bioshock Infinite definitely you need to get on it because some of the stuff that happens in this is pretty damn wild some of the twists toward the end definitely worth the run through I remember Soldier's Field being a little bit of a hard area to run just because of all the lights and stuff uh, so I don't know maybe this is quite a good area to stress test but as you can see we've just run right through the barrier that will this lot this We just ran straight through this and seems to smoothen out a little bit here. But this is quite a big gunfight, uh, so this would be a good, uh, a good test. Let me know, guys, if you like Bioshock as well. I mean, it's a pretty popular series, so I would not be surprised. But let me know if you prefer the uh, the first one or the the Infinite. Andrew Ryan's like a classy character, but I, I, I do really miss Rapture, but this city is awesome as well. Really like how they've integrated the uh, the rails and stuff for the traversal mechanics. Also got gyros enabled on this. I, I try and enable gyros on all first person shooters. Just because look how precise you can be. Especially in games like this, it's very useful. I was wondering if he was going to start shooting me, but yeah, there we go. You know, I have to say one thing about the Steam Deck, and a lot of people do say the same thing, but the, the hapsticks and the... They're obviously run out of space to to like apply massively beefy haptic feedbacks, but it's not massively good. So if you prefer like controls that give you really nice feedback, you know, puts you in the action a bit more, immerses you, then Steam Deck's not got amazing haptic feedback, but it's it is there. It's just very light. Uh, I mean, the Iron Ear definitely had better haptics, but at the end of the day, haptics can be quite a big distraction as well. So it's not a big deal. Other than that, the, the actual controls themselves blow the iron out of the water, for sure. Oh, these guys are getting beaten. There we go. 
uh, and that is Bioshock Infinite. If you want to see some more Bioshock Infinite, let me know. Um, this was quite a good level test for just the the frame rate, but yeah, okay. So here are the graphic settings I'm running, pretty medium. I might bump that up actually. Yeah, medium basically. Uh, da, 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 turn these off. Motion blur off. As you can see, this is pretty much the start of the game. I just beat the prologue, uh, but pretty solid 54 FPS, 55 FPS. Uh, I was running at 60 for a minute as well. I don't know if we're going to go back to 60, but it seems like there's quite a lot of light rays and stuff going on. But This game, I wouldn't be opposed at running at, at 30. Wouldn't massively bother me that much. Uh, you'd obviously get a really good battery life too. Because I think this is this is definitely a battery drainer. Uh, yeah, 25 minutes left on my battery. Um, it's probably one of the heaviest battery draining games I've played so far. So, let's bump it down to 30 and see how long we get on the battery life then. So, obviously not nowhere near as smooth, but... Sacrifices we gotta make sometimes. The fact that we're playing this in handheld anyway is pretty remarkable. Oh, to be fair, it doesn't actually bump you up as much as I was expecting. 31 minutes left. Yeah, maybe this game's just an overall battery drainer. If, that, if I'm only saving six minutes by playing in it, maybe we try a TDP limit on it, so maybe a 7 watt TDP limit might just make it playable at 30 still, yeah. So this TDP limit you can mess about with, it'll give you some extra battery life too because it's limiting the, the TDP from exceeding what it doesn't need to to use basically. So that's, gav that's gathered as like another 10 minutes maybe. Nothing too crazy. At this rate, I'd probably just play it at 60. Kind of uh, let's put the uh, the TDP back down. Just a more enjoyable experience. For the sake of like 15 minutes, it's nothing really. Unlike GTA, which was like giving you like an extra 40 to 50 minutes of the battery life. You just have it's a little bit of experimentation really, you just gotta figure out which one which one works, which one doesn't. But yeah, this one plays a lot nicer at 60. Okay, so shown here performing healing miracles. And uh, this will change depending on what scene you're in. So if you're in like a less demanding scene for like like a good half an hour, it might squeeze the battery a bit more. Obviously the environment in your games changes all the time, so it has to constantly change its estimated amount. I also found in games when I had pre-rendered cutscenes for a long time, that wouldn't use the battery life really that much because it's just using a, a playing a cutscene. So if you play a lot of games with pre-rendered cutscenes, not in-game cutscenes actually, like pre-rendered ones, you'll get you'll actually surprisingly get a lot of battery life. Because you spend a lot of the time watching pre-rendered stuff. That looks pretty good, right? It's amazing. Not too shabby for a handheld device. So uh, I'm getting pretty a pretty solid sixty here. I'm pretty happy with this. Quite a lot of stuff going on, to be fair. We've got the water physics as well. Waterfall stuff. A lot of rubble. Only really dropping to 56 and then back up to 60. Wait for it to fall. Yeah. So, we've had Uncharted, but sadly can't 
have a PlayStation or don't have a PlayStation, play Tomb Raider. It's basically just Uncharted, but with Tomb Raider lore. Sadly, Uncharted is not very playable on the PS3 emulator, apparently. Uh, so, I'll have to wait till that gets a little bit more optimised. But, yeah, just play the Tomb Raider trilogy. It's, it is good. And with that, we'll move on to the next game. The final game of the video, Big Hitter, another one from 2013. The Witcher 3. This one was running on Switch uh, a while ago, to be fair. did was running on Switch a while ago, but it looked absolute ass. Did not look great at all. For some reason, I thought I'd buy it just to play it handheld, and the experience was that bad. I just like kind of just played it as like a portable uh, Gwent, a portable Gwent in, uh, game, just because Gwent's such a a great card game. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, as you can see, it runs perfect on the Steam Deck. Let me just show you the settings I'm running at here. So. Turn this hair work off. We got medium, 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 medium. Pretty much all mediums. Post processing. I mean, this could be turned down a little bit. But yeah, apart from that, it's running a pretty pretty solid fifty to sixty FPS. Feels very smooth. Not very happy on the battery life, but it's an open world AAA title, so I'm not really going to be that. I'm not really that surprised, to be honest, because these games are obviously quite beefy to run anyway, so to get a decent battery life out of them, you're going to be looking at like an hour and 40, running at 60 FPS. I mean, if we drop it to 30, I'll give you an idea of what we can get out of it. Still runs really well at 30. And the main thing is it looks nice. I don't know what the hell they were they had it running on it on the Switch. Probably like ultra 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 low. Missing a lot of different settings, but yeah, no, this one looks really nice. Easily playable and you can obviously play as much Gwen as you want. Weirdly 30 FPS hasn't actually changed our battery life. Interesting. Normally that does boost the battery life in a lot of the games. Uh, maybe if we drop it in the pause menu. I don't know if we lock it at 30 in-game as well as outside the game. That looks really not smooth. Maybe that's just my eyes being weird, but... Let's see if that has made a difference. No, still, still saying 15%. So let's boost that back up to 60 and change that back up to 60. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't make a difference. Sometimes it makes a massive difference. Like I say, a trial and error on different games. Let's get Roach over here and do some uh, horse riding. If he wants to come and find me, there he is. Let's see if we can actually have a fight before my uh, Switch dies. My Switch Steam Deck dies. We've got some enemies around here. These are way too high level for me. Let's try and avoid. This dude's not there. Let's have a fight. Nice. My horse just booted me. Alright. I have to say that the, obviously The Witcher is an absolutely gloated game. Amazing game. But combat is... I don't know, it leaves a little bit to be desired sometimes. It's a very hack and slashy style of combat. You also die really quickly too. Like that. Oh, we got him. And yeah, we continue on. 
Looks great. Maybe you might get a better uh, better battery life out of it than me playing it. Playing at 30. Oh, something going on. And as you can tell, you get very sidetracked in this game, doing a lot of different side missions rather than the main story, but it's all part of the fun. It's Portable Witcher, but yeah. If you guys have enjoyed that, please let me know if you want to see any other games in the comments. Uh, I'll read them and we can start a little discussion again, but yeah, I'll see you guys next time.